Let's talk about original sin. And I don't mean like the beer or the religious stuff or like if you're born into a particular place and, you know, let's not even worry about that. I mean in the context of writing. See, fan productions are interesting because they take a lot of characters that we already know and then they try to present them in a new way that's kind of unique and maybe explains the universe in a way the original material never did. Sometimes these things are done really well and sometimes they're not done very well at all but you gotta remember that every single character has a past association that everyone already makes with them. That means that unless you make your story focus very specifically on this different character, any kind of alteration you make to the standard is gonna be a little bit jarring. For example, suppose you really like Professor Snape, and you think that he makes a better sad clown than everyone really gives him credit for. It. Well, there's no proving in the original stories that Snape wasn't a sad clown on the weekends, but you really have to introduce that idea to the readers. If you just jump into a chapter and Snape is finishing up a birthday party, you're gonna confuse people. It's not like everyone's just gonna follow along. This happens a lot in fan works, and it always kind of drives me a little bit crazy. It's like, oh, okay, I really like Team Rocket's Jessie from Pokemon. Okay, fair enough, maybe she wears the same lipstick as your mom, but if you try to portray this character as being like really intelligent and a strong leader, you're kind of going against what they've established in the show. You want her to be sexy or whatever, I don't know, but she's a kid show villain, and kid show villains tend to be kind of bumbling unless they're like the arch villain. So a lot of us see a character like Trixie, and all we think of is the bumbling petty villain from the show. There's not really a lot of substance there, and after all, Team Rocket has had their own redemption episodes, but they go right back to capturing Pikachu afterward. I hate to say it, and I'm not trying to squelch creativity, but that's just the way of things. It's how we establish the show. It's the vehicle for the plot. I mean, hey, the writers for Pokemon mix things up. Team Rocket wasn't always the bad guy, but they were always Team Rocket. You just gotta have that internal consistency if you're gonna use the characters. If you're not gonna be internally consistent, then why even use the characters in the first place? You can't really make a character different if you're not willing to at first recognize what they are. Trixie and Discord are kid show villains. Gilda was a kid show villain. They might be more intense in, I don't know, comics or fan fiction, but I haven't read or seen all those things. I'm afraid you just gotta sell it to me, otherwise I'm gonna get confused and it's gonna mess up my immersion. Anyway, let's get back to our game. We left off just before entering a silly flashback about a time before Twilight was alive, and therefore she has no way of knowing that this actually happened. The Esper World. This is it. Mostly just, you know, some rocks in a cave and... Everyone lives inside. It's very natural, very in touch with Earth. They do have barrels, though. They achieve barrel technology. It's a very magical place. Oh, wow. The palette swaps did not do any favors for the espers. Gosh, look at that goofy hair. At least, though, I can definitely tell that is a ponytail. I used to not know. Okay, don't panic. What will you do? Return together! Doesn't seem sanitary just leaving a horse lying around in the street, you know? Somebody's gotta clean up. Someone has to take responsibility. That guy with the orange hair totally blew it off. You put the horse in the bed? Why does the horse go into bed? It's a horse! She's pretty weak, better let her rest for a moment. Seriously, our sprites are like way more detailed than hers. She's a horse! Did I awaken you? I mean, even Parcheesi the Esper horse stays in a stable, come on! You're, you're an Esper! What's that pennant for? Priorities? I'm on a spaceship, where'd you get those earrings? Those are cute! It's yours now! It helps protect the Esper world, so I gave it to you! Esper world? Jeez, did I take the low road or what? The Esper folk are pretty upset, you being a pony and all. You're the one who saved me? I found you on the floor. I am a doin', and you are? My name is Twilight. I see. I tired of living in the mortal world. You magical unicorns just don't mix in with us magical creatures. That world is filled with desire, greed, and loathing. It's highly infectious. I mean, you unicorns just don't have any innocence at all. I thought you guys would be all cute and in touch with nature, but then it turns out you have, like, orgies and blood sacrifices, and, and Pony Sola has really bad acne, and then there's, like, a griffin, and she's, like, Hitler? What the crap? I mean, she's not, like, completely directly Hitler, but she's like an allegory for Hitler. Did you know that the Nazis actually had stud farms where they made blonde-haired, blue-eyed people have sex with each other, and then they had kids, and then they raised the kids? But it turned out that raising kids apart from their parents actually produced kids that weren't as good as normal kids. I heard the Empire's gonna start doing a thing where they start raising, like, Magitek Knights from kids, and so they have, like, the Ubermensch kids. Yeah. You don't have to return to allegorical Hitler, you could stay here! But ponies and espers aren't compatible! How do we know for sure, unless we observe for ourselves? Oh my gosh, this is like the time that Zeus turned into a swan and had adult time with a cow. Is he casting a spell? Like, here we go, it reminds me of the Fiddling About song from the Tommy CD. Fiddling about, fiddling about. <laughs> then beans and soap burst from the television, but I don't know what it's symbolic of. I mean... Does anyone worry that maybe, like, the original creators made Maduin human-like, so that when he had, you know, adult time with the human, it wouldn't be so weird. We've given her a name. What? 
We'll name her after you, Twilight Sparkle. Not bad, huh? She is a man horse child. Two years later. Ponies, the nexus between our worlds has been opened again. The wind, so odd, just like two years ago. But something's different now. Troops have come seeking our magical power. Okay, do ponies not live in a highly romanticized society? Because this doesn't fit. Blast it! They've made it as far as the Elder's house. What's the Elder's house? That fairy? Does the Elder live inside that fairy? We gotta get her back! I thought she was an esper! Ha! Those dweeby scholars were right. These creatures will give us the power of magic, and then my army will be unstoppable. Get going, you losers! We gotta catch them all! I remember when Pokemon first came out. I think that was like grade school. Articuno is still the best Pokemon, I don't care what they say. Our little Twilight Sparkle's alright. Oh, well that's good, I was worried she was some kind of horrible abomination. We've no choice, we must do what we've been avoiding. You mean, the magic barrier? No, the magic dance. Not the magic dance, have we tried the magic incantation? Yes, of course we've tried the magic incantation. They have a shield for the magic incantation. What? That's impossible. Oh, I know, I thought the same thing. But in your state, the magic dance could kill you. I know. That's why we've never done the magic dance before, in case anyone was wondering. Oh, everyone, my wife, a horse, has an opinion. She says, I, for one, will not miss the other side. That's what she says. Also, she'd like an apple. She's a horse. Let's do it. We have no other choice. Man, if you think that your girlfriend is worried about, like, the pudge of her tummy, imagine being a better detailed sprite, who is humanoid, and your wife is a horse. You'd just, like, stumble across her one day, and she'd be crying, and you'd be like, Honey, what's wrong? And she'd be like, Nothing. And you'd be like, come on, you know, what's the matter? And she'd be like, I'm just, I'm just worried, you know, because I'm a horse, and you're like, a human, only like way better detailed than I am. And then you gotta like sit down and tell, you'd be like, honey, I find your horse face beautiful. I love your flat teeth that you use to grind up grass shoots and stuff. No other guys got that. And she'd be like, the other guys are dating espers, you know, and they're better detailed than I am, you know, they, they have better features. And you'd be like, nah, -uh, that's not true. Uh, uh, Parcheesi, the horse esper, has a horse girlfriend. She'd be like, well, he's a horse esper. And you'd be like, well, do you want to date Parcheesi? You guys are both horses, you have a lot in common. And she'd be like, no, that's not what I mean. And then you'd be like, honey, you know, I just can't deal with this, okay? We tried to have a baby abomination, what more do you want? And she'd say, I just don't feel like we spend enough time together. And then you'd be like... Honey, I'm outside with you every day while you're grazing. And she'd be like, I can't talk while I'm grazing, I'm grazing. And you'd say, I don't know, I still like your company when we're out there together. And she'd say, look, I'm just not sure if we should have had a child on my first day of consciousness in the Esper world. And then really, it's all downhill from there. Your relationship is all but over. And so the moral is, if you find a strange horse lying around on the ground outside your house, you shouldn't bring her inside your house and then put her in your bed and then have a baby with that horse. I feel like if they had successfully locked themselves in, then, like, the story would have been about Twilight Sparkle growing up in a home where, like, her mom and her dad argued a lot, and her mom blamed her dad for shutting her off from the mortal world, and then they get a divorce, and they've got to go through all this divorce stuff, and then eventually mom moves in with Parcheesi, the horse esper, and, and Twilight would have been all caught up. She'd be like, you know, my, my dad didn't understand my mom's needs, but he was trying, and my mom should have been respectful of that, and... Or, that would have been the story if this story weren't completely made up, because Twilight didn't exist for the first half of it, and she was a baby for the second half, so there was no way she knew any of that! Hey guys, having that flashback helped me come to terms with my magical powers as a unicorn. Surrounded by alicorns, and a flying pegasus, and Pinky. Wait a minute, everyone's got something special and magical about them! Aw oh man, that just means I have weird parents. That's not special. I bet Celestia and Luna have weird parents, and I bet they weren't into bestiality. Maybe. I don't know, do you guys want to have a flashback? Oh, oh, do you want me to have a flashback to back when the dinosaurs were alive and I can tell you what color they were? Okay, I think it's official. I've kind of lost interest in every one of these characters. Well, except for maybe Apple Bloom and Applejack, but that's because they're the most grounded characters and people screw them up the least often. I just need one strong protagonist, someone who I want to see get through this game alive. So far, if Apple Bloom got killed, I'd be somewhere in neutral to slightly upset, and I would be unhappy if AJ died. But everyone else could just drop off the face of the earth. I don't care. Okay, and here's Dash being completely moronic at me. Don't try any double loop-de-loops until you're as good as I am. It's an airship, come on. If you could do double loop-de-loops, you'd fall right off the deck. Therefore, we know that you're not good enough to do double loop-de-loops, because otherwise you would be dead. No, don't show me anything cool. You're not 
You're not gonna show me anything cool. You don't- you don't know what you're talking about. Just move over, let me fly. I'm gonna get it from point A to point B without crashing into anything. That's good flying. In fact, while we're at it, Dash, go fetch us some of those little pilot wings, because we're pilots now. Also, a map, I- We're lost! Where are we going? Oh, over here. This little crevice in the wall with no strategic value whatsoever. There's like an esper there, but we can't talk to it. Oh, hang on, I forgot something. I forgot to reduce my party size by at least 20% by getting Rainbow Dash out of the party in 10 seconds flat! It's okay, it's not the real Rainbow Dash. This dash ain't bad. This dash ain't nothing! Boom, 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 boom. Boom, ba doom, boom, boom, ba doom. Not Dash, not Dash. She is not really Dash. Dun, dun, not Dash. Not who's Dash? I'm sorry Michael Jackson turned into a space monster. But you know, that's really the only thing I need. If I could just get, like, one character who was something really silly and really out there, like Michael Jackson or a gorilla in a top hat or something. I keep getting told, you know, don't take this game too seriously. It's just Final Fantasy VI with ponies in it. But the thing is, is I haven't run into anything that indicates that I shouldn't take it seriously. Currently, it's kind of like bad writing, you know, quoting the characters from the show. But where it really needs to go is over the top. I need to show up somewhere to talk about military strategy, and Michael Jackson will just be standing around for the conversation. We'll be like, Michael, what do you think? And he'll be like, I don't know, because he's Michael Jackson. Or the game could just start intentionally creating, like, gaping plot holes and sending us places for reasons that make no sense. Make it seem like we have zero plans and that we're just stumbling blindly into things. I mean, like, intentionally, though, not like what we're doing now. I mean, I don't know, I'm just not sure where the appeal is supposed to lie, specifically. Like, for example, Twilight is supposed to be our proactive, but overly stressed out leader, you know? She's very expressive, and... All I've gotten so far is that she's basically like Terra from the original game, who was kind of just swept along by fate and had no real control. Yet, Trixie gets her own personality that doesn't line up with the show version or the game. That's why I think her role would be better played by Michael Jackson or a gorilla in a top hat. Because then it would be all like, We have to get this gorilla in a top hat to talk to the Esper! And then he would try and it would like turn into a monster and fly away. And then we'd all be just standing around and be like, Man, we really screwed up that gorilla. And then I would feel compelled to go help the gorilla. You know, I want to track it down and make sure it's okay. Because it's a gorilla, it doesn't know any better. It doesn't understand war, it just likes bananas. Then we'd find Ramu and he'd be like, This gorilla is going through a deeply troubling personal crisis. Then later on, we'd have that flashback about the time that Maduin got busy with a gorilla lady. Because, and... you know, how do you prove that you can't have babies with a gorilla unless you try? Then the whole game would revolve around how the gorilla is a link between the Esper world and... Well, nothing really, because it's a gorilla. But knowing in advance how things are going to play out, we might as well replace Twilight with a gorilla because we're going to get the same result. Yep, know now that after these planning stages, it'll turn out that Twilight is every bit as useful as a confused and vaguely cooperative gorilla in a top hat. We have to establish a bond of trust between the ponies and espers. Only one pony can do this. Everyone just look. She'll get the hint. Oh no, I'm not up to the challenge of taking charge and being a leader. Twy. See, this is what I'm talking about. Twilight is just not the character I see moping and being uncertain of herself. Oh my gosh, my existence is proof that Espers can have babies with horses. Boy, this is so deeply troubling to me. Doesn't Spike have like a big bestiality thing for rarity? Why is this weird? I'll do it, I'm the only one who can. You know what she can't do though? Probably have kids, because her chromosomes are all messed up and they're like, an uneven number? Um, maybe we'll wait until she's done grappling with the very concept of being half Esper before we bring up the actual implications. I think the way that things have been going, if we brought it up, we'd probably have to stand around in yet more awkward silences while we wait for Twilight to come to terms with the fact. You know, some people would be really excited to find out that they're half demigod. You know, it means you're like one quarter god, but not Twilight. Twilight just has an existential crisis. Whoa, I've been made! Oh my gosh, it's the Christmas wolf! Are you stealing Christmas or bringing it back? I am Lone Wolf, the pickpocket! I wanted that treasure! Well, I guess he's stealing Christmas. Well, that is not acceptable. The winter holidays are all I have left to look forward to in this game. Come back here, you Christmas wolf! You've stolen our dazzlers and blazzlers and yellow who flazzlers! Why don't we tell our noble who travelers? Because, you know, they're gonna come home for the holidays and they're gonna be like, what happened to our flazzlers? I think he is stopping our Christmas from coming because he is tired of who trouble strumming. All of the day with its wobble dang dang, he simply can't stand those horrible things. What would you do if you were a who who couldn't withstand the noise he goes through? I'll stamp out their joy, he said to our dread. I'll grab up a paintbrush and paint the town red. And now we are weeping with piteous pleas. Won't you give back our wonderful trees? They're lighted atop with who bobble stars to make you feel loved, whoever you are. We're dreadfully sorry for noise that we've made, but maybe our debts can all be repaid. And then the atomic bomb goes off because the Butterside Wars were crazy. So that Christmas wolf, he's gotta be feeling pretty dumb by now, because if he just runs south, like out of town, he'd be scot-free. As it is, he's just running deeper into the mines, which only leads to a dead end. Also a horrible esper. 
We don't really have a very good track record with that Esper, it kind of kills everything that it comes in contact with. I guess that's why we're giving up on it, no one said anything about like, Hey Twilight, do you want to try talking to that Esper again, now that you're in touch with the fact that you are half Esper? We're just like, no, it's not worth it. But surely other Espers though. Oh, hello. Stop, don't move or I'll cut him. Okay, I'll just hold still then. How did you get a hold of one of the dancing cannibal Scootaloos, and what makes you think you're safe holding one? hi -ya! Yeah, I got a wild one here. ooh -ah! Oh god, she's dancing! There's gonna be a hole! Oh, okay, never mind, just gonna screw everything up. Girl, you'll never get this gold main pin. Oh gosh, you got a gold main pin? Is it, like, what edition? Took the treasure from Lone Wolf, the pickpocket. Got the gold main pin. What edition is it? Oh wow, she really dropped. I thought for sure she'd try to at least flutter her wings. Hmm, if this is gonna be how it is, take this! Okay, suicide. Goodbye. Well, we may have killed a Scootaloo. But the good news is we got a limited edition gold hairpin. Our MP cost goes down 50%, and if we were playing the original game, that would put us at about, oh, normal MP consumption. So, yay. Why is magic valuable again? Oh, well, whatever. We didn't fight any new monsters today, so thanks for playing with me, everybody.